Hi, this is Damien from Top 5 E-Bikes, and today I'm gonna to review the Urban Glide Pro from Van Powers Bikes. So you might have seen our last review uh, for Van Powers. That was the City Vancher bike, the bike you kind of had to partially assemble, um, and it was more of a single speed belt drive e-bike. This is a commuter style city bike, and it's really exciting. It's got a lot of really great features. It's priced at $16.99 right now, which is right in the ballpark, right on par with a lot of other city commuter e-bikes that are really exciting coming out from brands like Aventon and Juice Bikes. So I'm really excited to talk about this bike, but before I start, I just wanna remind everyone, please subscribe to Top 5 E-Bikes if you have not already. When you subscribe, when you like and comment on our reviews, on our content, it really helps out a lot. And if you're gonna buy this bike and if our review helped steer you towards this bike, then please consider going through the affiliate link in the description of this YouTube review. And that way we get credit for those sales and that helps us build a better relationship with Van Powers and ultimately helps us build relationships with other great e-bike brands as well. So like every review, I'm gonna do a little bit of a test ride. I'm gonna give you my first impressions and um, we'll do pros and cons. And at the end, I'll just give you my final thoughts on the Urban Glide Pro from uh, Van Powers. The Urban Glide Pro from Van Powers is currently priced at $18.99. It comes in three colors, Remy Green, Lava Red, and Zircon Gray, like the one you see here. The frame is a 6061 alloy frame, and this step-through bike comes in two sizes, a small and a large. It weighs 70.55 pounds, including the battery, and the battery is a 48 volt, 14.4 amp hour battery that's removable. The motor is a 500 watt high-speed brushless hub motor. It has five levels of pedal assist, and goes up to 20 miles per hour. The range on the 14.4 amp hour battery is 65 to 70 miles. It also comes with a Zoom hydraulic suspension fork with a lockout with 80 millimeters of travel. The rear derailleur is MicroShift RD M26L. It's an eight speed. It comes with hydraulic disc brakes. The tires are Kenda 27.5 by 2.2 inch tires with a K-Shield resistant layer and reflective sidewalls. It has a nice 3.5 inch color LCD display. It comes with a Velo saddle. It has got an adjustable handlebar. It comes with brake lights, tail light, and a front light. It comes with a Zoom adjustable stem, and it also comes with a Zoom suspension seat post. The rear rack is also included. Another great thing about the Urban Glide Pro is it comes with a bell and it comes with a rear rack standard. So first thing I'm gonna do is go up my, my driveway, my steep driveway to see how, how we do on this bike. We're on pedal assist three, we're going 12 miles per hour. I'm uh, pedaling not really too hard here. Yeah, this is a quick motor, actually. 500 watts, this, this, is a, this feels a lot more powerful than 500 watts. Right off the bat, I'm impressed that a 500 watt motor is capable of this much speed and that much torque getting up that hill. Brakes kind of need to break in a little bit, but they feel strong. They're uh, hydraulic disc brakes. As I'm going down the hill, I'm going 28. I mean, I'm. I'm kind of riding the brake a little bit. I could, I could be going a lot faster. This bike only goes up to 20. I don't think there's a way to unlock higher speeds either. I haven't, I haven't found a way at least yet. So another thing that's cool about this bike, it has a torque sensor. With a lot of bikes with torque sensors, you know, sometimes you don't get that responsiveness of the torque sensor. This one, I feel like it's super responsive. Not every torque sensor is built the same way, I would say, this one feels, you know, feels like a cadence sensor in a lot of ways um, because there's, there's not really any, any delay or lag when I'm pushing down on the crank. So, you know, a little bumpy here because it's not really meant to be an off-road bike. This is for sure a city commuter bike. It's got that hybrid feel. It's got these thick tires, you know, transitioning from hard pavement to, you know, bumpier pavement or maybe a little bit of off-roading. This this bike could handle it no problem. So it's it's got a little bit of 
best of both worlds. And it comes with a suspension seat post, which is not really nice. I don't usually, you don't usually get a suspension seat post standard with an e-bike. I really don't have anything negative to say right off the bat as far as first impressions go. It's comfortable. These tires feel pretty rugged um, and capable of, you know, some kind of light off-roading, nothing too crazy. Okay, let's do a little, uh, little off-roading here on the grass. So, you know, I'm not going very fast, but um, this, is, this is pretty easy. Flat grass, kind of uneven surface. This motor is, has enough torque where you know, I'm barely pedaling and I'm able, able to move pretty, pretty quickly. So I, I feel like this, this bike has a, has a premium feel to it. It's under $2,000, but I would say it's, you know, it, it's more in the premium class of e-bike. It doesn't feel cheap, doesn't feel like they sacrificed, you know, components or, or build quality. Like it's, it's, this is a pretty solid bike for sure. So in terms of pros, I'd love to tell you some more things about what I like about this bike. One, the motor and the torque sensor. This bike comes with a 500 watt motor, which is not huge, right? There's a lot of other city commuter bikes that peak at 750 watts or even higher. But I found that the 500 watts and the torque that you get with this bike, it's ample. The torque sensor, I've ridden a few bikes with torque sensors because a lot of bikes are coming out with torque sensors. And some of those bikes, feel kind of sluggish as you're getting, as you're accelerating, right? Especially if you're accelerating from a stop sign. This particular combination of motor and torque sensor feels very responsive and it provides a lot of acceleration, which I was really surprised by. When I'm using the thumb throttle or when I'm using pedal assist levels, going up hills, that was no problem on this bike, even though it's only a 500 watt motor. So, you know, there are bigger motors out there, but I don't know what it is, what they're doing at Van Powers, but this is seems like a highly efficient, high torque motor. It's great for city riding and it's great for, for paved streets. So that is a, a big plus for me. Another big plus for me is just the design and the comfort. Let's start with the design, right? It's got this integrated battery and it has a really beautiful frame. You're gonna see this bike has really clean edges, kind of sharp angles. Everything kind of flows seamlessly together in this frame. And you don't really see like ugly welds on it. It just feels like a clean, very sleek bike. You know I love integrated batteries. This is a pretty good size battery too. So 690 watt hours, that's pretty good size for a battery that fits inside the frame. That's a, a big plus, I think, and a good reason you would wanna buy this bike. The other reason I think this is a, a great commuter style e-bike is the comfort that they build into it, right? So this is one of the most comfortable bikes under $2,000 that I've ridden. And it starts with the tires. These are 2.2 inches wide. They're kind of rugged, they're pretty, versatile, I would say. You're gonna mostly be riding this on pavement, but it's very easy to ride this on grass or on, you know, uneven, hard packed dirt, things like that. Light, light trails. Um, I think it's great for that. And if you're gonna be on some bumpy terrain, it's great because you got the front suspension, it's the zoom suspension here, right? You've got the suspension seat post, which not a lot of bikes come with a suspension seat post. It's usually something you have to buy separately as an upgrade. This bike comes with a suspension seat post. I love it. It also has this adjustable stem so you can adjust the, the height and the angle of the handlebars to exactly your preferences. You know, the shifts very easily, shifts very smoothly. The micro shift, trigger shifters, I feel like they do a great job. It's a very smooth ride and you know, for city commuter e-bikes that I've ridden before, this is this is right up there, right? This is one of the best ones. Another thing that I was super impressed by with this bike is the fenders. And that seems kind of like a weird thing to nerd out about, but it's got these nice metal fenders you can hear, right? And they're aligned perfectly and they're straight. They just inspire more confidence than the typical flimsy plastic fenders that you get with most e-bikes. When this bike came, the, the rear fender and the rear rack were already installed, so I didn't have to mess with it. The front fender I had to assemble, and it was actually it was pretty easy, pretty seamless, and I love how easy it was. And, and right out of the gates, 
it, it fit correctly, it was aligned correctly. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten, I've re we've received bikes and you have to install the front fender and the front arms are misaligned and you have to bend them and it's, it's kind of a pain. And then anytime you bump anything with those fenders, it misaligns everything and you start getting friction between the tire and the fender, which is kind of a pain in the butt. And one of my pet peeves with the cheap fenders that you get with, um, with most e-bikes. All of the things, the entire package that you get with the Urban Glide Pro, it's just a very high quality bike with a lot of value for under $2,000, right? Yeah, there are definitely better, higher quality bikes out there with you know, bigger batteries and bigger motors, but for under 2,000, you get hydraulic disc brakes, you get eight speeds, right? You get the suspension seat post, it comes with the rack, it comes with rear lights, uh, brake lights, in fact, front lights, right? And it comes with a pretty strong, um, pretty satisfying motor, which gives you a lot of acceleration. So I think all of that is really hard to, to, to beat for right now only $16.99. This is tremendous value. I, I would highly recommend if you wanted to spend $16.99. This is a strong contender as far as city commuter e-bikes go. All right, so let's get into some of the things I don't love about this bike. And they're kind of minor, but there's no way I could do a review without mentioning them. Although I said I like the design and I like how beautiful the welds are and, and just the cleanness of this frame, the paint job kind of sucks, um, to be honest. When I got the bike, it already had some scuffs. You can, you might be able to see them here. And it's already kind of wearing off on the, the logo part. So, you know, the paint job is is kind of like on the cheaper side. And I would love to see and for future iterations of this bike if Van Powers would invest in higher quality paint materials and improve their painting process. This bike is brand new. I've put barely any miles on it and I'm already seeing a lot of very visible scuffs on it. Let's talk about the cable management, right? There's kind of this whole mess of wires here. It'd be cool if they just included one of those like Velcro sleeves so you can keep them kind of hidden in place and tucked away. I think that's a very easy solve for that. You could probably buy something like that as an accessory on your own. Again, kind of nitpicky, but worth mentioning. The battery. One thing that maybe leaves a little bit to be desired is the size of the battery. It's, it's only 690 watt hours. Pretty big, right? Especially for commuter style e-bikes, city bikes. But there are definitely bikes that have bigger batteries out there. And it's kind of interesting that there's three versions of this bike. This is kind of like the mid-tier version. The Ultra also is a 690 watt battery. Some companies like Juice, they'll, they'll make it easy to upgrade the battery size, right? Or, or that'll be an option when, in the checkout. Be cool if they did that with, with this bike as well. So yeah, aside from that, um, there's not too much I don't love about this bike. One big, uh, probably sticking point for a lot of people though, is the bike only goes 20 miles per hour. You know, a lot of bikes, a lot of bike owners, they're, they're not even gonna look at a bike if it doesn't go 28. I have friends like that, they just, they need that speed, right? And typically it's younger people that are more in shape and maybe have a little bit of higher tolerance for risk, right? I think for most riders, 20 is, is fine, is fast enough. And one of the reasons you don't want a slow bike is because you don't want a sluggish bike. And this is not a sluggish bike. This bike has a lot of acceleration. Like when I'm at a stop sign and I'm hitting the thumb throttle, right? I get out of people's way pretty fast, right? And, and that's the thing. It's more about the acceleration than it is about top speed, in my opinion, right? You wanna be able to get out of the way of cars. You wanna be able to bike safely. And sometimes you need to move quickly to bike safely, right? Especially if you're sharing the road with cars. So I think although the top speed is not there, it's only 20, it makes up for it. The motor, the torque response, it makes up for it with, with acceleration. Oh, and the last thing that uh, I would maybe change or I would maybe hope for with the next version of the, the Glide, the Glide series, there's only step throughs. So I, that, I guess that was a conscious decision. They decided to only do step through frames for this bike. It would be nice if there was a mid step or a high step frame. It'd be great if they had options. The option they do have is you can get two sizes of frames. So there's a small and a large, but they're all gonna be step through, step through frames, no matter which version of the Glide you get.
I'm really impressed with the Urban Glide Pro. It's a really well-rounded, well-priced city commuter e-bike. From the splashier features like the hydraulic disc brakes, the eight-speed micro-shift drivetrain, the really ultra-responsive torque sensor, right down to the little details like the metal fenders, the suspension seat post. Those are all really awesome reasons to get a Urban Glide Pro. At $1,700, this bike actually compares really favorably to the Juice Bikes Cross Current X and the Aventon Level Commuter. And those bikes have bigger motors. They're peak at 750 watts to up to 1,000 watts with the, with the Juice Bikes. But I don't feel like you're giving up a lot of acceleration and speed with this smaller 500 watt motor. I feel like you get ample torque and ample acceleration, which is really what matters. And this compares very favorably to those bikes. On the other hand, if going 28 miles per hour is a deal breaker for you, and if you really love the look of a mid-step and a high-step frame, then you're probably not gonna get this bike. But for everyone else, where those things maybe aren't deal breakers, there's just so many other great things to offer about this e-bike. And again, at $1,700, it's a really great bargain and people should really run out and get this bike. Thank you so much for watching our review. Stay tuned for future reviews on the Co-op Generation Cycles 1.2 and the Rad Runner 3 Plus.